call came at about uh, 20 minutes before 10 this morning of a shooting. It's believed there was one shooter, a male, who is now dead. And the reports we're getting from law enforcement is that uh, of the 26 dead, most are children. That was five years ago. Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. It has been five years since the mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, rocked that small community and indeed the nation. The carnage was horrific. 21st graders and six school workers all caught off guard and actually massacred in a town where crime most certainly not the norm. In the five years since, we have seen other massacres, the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, most recently in Las Vegas, yet the event at Sandy Hook Elementary remains a benchmark. The chilling story of the aftermath of the murders there, as seen through the eyes of the victims' families in the community, was the subject of a 2016 documentary titled Newtown. The film's producer, Maria Cuomo Cole, and director, Kim Snyder, have been relentless in their pursuit to begin a national conversation on the issues surrounding gun reform. The pair started a campaign titled Hashtag We Are All Newtown, and have hosted over 100 screenings and panel discussions in diversely political neighborhoods across America, including one community that's doing its own part to remember the victims of the tragedy, the city of Grinnell, Iowa, hometown of Grinnell College, and also of NRA President Pete Brownell. Let's take a look. We're talking about the unnecessary loss of life. That's what we're talking about. Right from the start of our conversation, it was clear that to engage our local context on the issue of gun rights, gun safety, had to include an open invitation to Mr. Peter Brownell, CEO of Brownell's, current president of the NRA, and our neighbor. Our guest tonight, Mr. David Wheeler, who lost his son Ben at Sandy Hook, wrote directly to Mr. Brownell recently to request a one-on-one -on -one meeting during his visit here in Grinnell to see if there could be any common ground reached. But again, he has not heard back. So what do you do when your neighbor won't talk to you? Joining me now are the film's producer and director, Maria Cuomo Cole and Kim Snyder. It's nice to have you here with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. I, I want to ask you about the documentary in a second, but we were just talking a moment ago about the fact that all three of us looked and we said, five years. That, that in many ways it was difficult for us to imagine that five years have pa passed. And, and we talked about, uh, and Maria, you said this, it's one of those things where you always will remember where you were. Is that what you're finding as you're traveling around the country, uh, that same kind of reaction that people have? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's true. And people, um, people remember where they were. Um, and I think that's a good thing. I mean, it's, it's why we made the film. Yeah. We should remember. We can never forget. Um, because, you know, we are all responsible, ultimately. And um, we felt it was extremely important to tell the story of what happens after the cameras yeah, have let, left let, town. Let me tell me about that, because you, I'm sure people would have thought, okay, a documentary about Newtown, let's, let's do the whole shooting and, and follow that. But you, you both decided, let's do a different story. Let's do a story of afterwards, through the eyes of, of, of the victims' families and the survivors. Why? Well, we both felt it was the only story that we were interested in telling. It's, uh, um, you know, the most sensitive kind of subject uh, one can imagine. And certainly we can never put ourselves in the shoes of the victims' families, um, nor the community members. Um, but we felt it was extremely important to capture the story of what really happens to a community when the cameras have left. You know, we have uh, nationally, we, we mourn uh, the losses after these horrific tragedies, but we move on, we have to move on. But the community is left, the families of loved ones lost, and the stakeholders in a community, law enforcement, teachers, the medical community, what happens, how do they move forth? And um, we hoped to bring um, our cameras in, in a way that they could tell their own story. When you talk about moving forward, and, and, and Kim, let me ask you this, I mentioned the, the campaign, We Are All New Town. Um, you're going beyond being filmmakers, and, and you're continuing to carry that story in, the fa in that fashion. Why did you want to do that, and why in that way? Well, I think, as Maria said, we were interested in the beginning in really telling a story of collective grief more than anything else. And I think part of it was to 
break through this inevitable desensitization that I think five years later we know is even more heightened. There's no way we can endure the news of how many, over 1,500 mass shootings since five years ago, and not begin to shut down. And I think that is scary. Um, and I think people realize that. And so part of the, the film is to, to take these 85 minutes to really stand with one community that represents not only communities of mass shootings, but the shootings that we know take place every day, you know, in, in homicides and suicides that rock the country. Um, and we really did it to also be able to ask the question, is civic discourse possible over an issue that's become so politically polarized and to sort of try to break beyond that, that divide? Let's talk about what you've been doing, because as I mentioned, a hundred of these gatherings, and it comes back to what you said, civic discourse. This is not one of those issues that lends itself to reasoned conversation. To the, the notion of, of let's, we can agree to disagree, but we can be very civil about that. There are emotions wrapped around this. So when you first decided to, to, to say, okay, let's do this. Let's do some screenings and let's, let's surround them with conversations. And, and we should mention, these are not just people all on one side in your conversations. Right. What were you hoping, Maria, I'll ask you first, what were you hoping you'd accomplish? Well, again, to bring the human story to communities around the country, um, where we all very much look the same, whether it's Newtown, Connecticut, Grinnell, Iowa, um, New York City, we really have the same concerns about our, our family's sa safety, our community health, our public safety. And, um, you know, raising those voices are very important to cut through the political polarization, as Kim said. And when we hear, especially from parents who've lost their kids, from teachers who were in the classroom at Newtown, from the emergency room doctor who, you know, dealt with watching his, you know, his neighbor's children come into his emergency room helpless. You know, this cuts through, um, it, it cuts through everything and gets to the heart of the matter, which is that we are all responsible. We need to speak up. Um, and it's not an issue that we cannot remedy. It is an issue that we can address with sensible gun laws. It, it the two of you do an interesting thing, and, and I was struck by it because it's, it's sort of what, what I have been doing in, in my reporting on this over the years, and that is you don't use the term gun control in your conversations. Why not? Well, I, you know, I'm newer to the space of, of, as, as an activist, but I do consider myself that, that now, five years later. And, you know, I think one of the rare things about our film is because it wasn't constructed as a piece of advocacy, but one that really looked, as I said, at this universal collective grief, um, we found that we've been able to reach gun owners and to sort of reach beyond that, that choir. But based in part on how you title it, the conversation, instead of saying this is a conversation about gun control, you say preventing gun violence? Yes, I think the words matter. I think you do alienate a lot of people with the word control. I think that part of the conversation is in being able to, to as, as David said in a letter that he sent to Mr. Brownell, that it's hard to believe that as fathers or as, as, as neighbors or as mothers that there isn't some common ground that can be reached, and that's got to be a starting point. And what, what's one of the things you're looking for in these conversations? Yes, yeah, so some, some, some common ground. Finding commonality, absolutely, and we do. Um, you know, whether it's Florida, Texas, some of the, you know, the toughest states on um, the political issue, there is still a commonality of compassion and concern for one's own um, safety and security of their loved ones. And you're finding that from, from people who are avowed gun owners? Gun owners, absolutely. We've had NRA members NRA come members. and say, you're reaching, you're reaching people like us with, that, with this. We've had... Um, you know, rarely, I, I think in the hunt, it's been hundreds of screenings. We've rarely had, I don't think ever, a situation that got volatile. I, I was going to ask you that. Did, have, did you have any sort of emotional there's explosions in these conversations? There's been disagreement um, and concerns about challenges to the Second Amendment, but that is quickly abated in the conversation. And that's really the point, that it's not at all a challenge to one's rights to own guns um, and to, you know, use them within the law. Um, but 
but one can't help as a gun owner, as an NRA member, very few have refuted the need um, to be safer, to create safer controls. Let me, let me go back to Grinnell for a second, and can you just mention something, let's say elaborate on a little bit. We saw in the introduction that a letter had been extended to Pete Brownell, who, who uh, the president, uh, current president of the NRA, who, who lives and has his gun company in that town. What, what, what happened as a consequence of that letter? Um, David had, as, as we said, uh, reached out with the idea that they're two fathers. And as I was saying to David actually uh, the other day, they're not just, neither one of the, them are just any father. They're both in very different uh, special positions. David, sadly, in a position he never would have chosen, but to have this platform of, of, of being a father of loss. And Pete Brownell in the, in the position of having enormous influence not only over NRA members, but over lawmakers. And so in that, it was a significant uh, plea, a right. significant letter. And, and he, he did not attend, but you, you mentioned that his wife actually did attend. She did. Uh, the community, we got word, and we thought that was courageous um, of her to come and pay respect to the community members that we had brought. There were six of us who traveled to Grinnell, including our, our doctor friend, Dr. Begg, and uh, Marianne Jacob, who's a surviving teacher and a Republican and, uh, you know, in a home a, a gun owner. Um, so we thought that was um, a good starting point. And uh, she, she did attend the, not only the screening, but the town hall. Well, it, it was a, a marvelous documentary that you did. And I think the follow up work you're doing, trying to encourage the notion of let's have conversations civil civic discourse and let's find some common ground something that's so desperately needed in our society now but it's encouraging to see the 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 response and the successes that you had so i want to thank you both thank Maria you. Kim, for spending some time with us thank you and if we could say we so. would love people to check out what we're doing at newtownfilm.com perfect and also going to remind our folks if you'd like to get involved first of all do that check out what they're doing and also if you'd like to get involved host a screening in your neighborhood, make sure you go to metrofocus.org for more information.